Main Chick vs. Side Bitch Chapter 3 Arian After talking to Mr. Fabry last night, I didn't sleep that well. Bitches invaded my thoughts, taking me back to my days in prison. Not the pleasant days when my time was a breeze, but those days that were so hard on me that I thought I was going to die. Those nights where I cried myself to sleep with a picture of my daughter clutched in my hands. Those nights when I cried so silently that I didn't think God could even hear me. But now that I was out in my own place with my own furniture and a lock on the door, I still didn't feel safe. I stayed up most nights looking at braiding designs or watching YouTube videos for ideas for my clients. And then I would put up more ads to get even more clients. If it's not about money, I don't give a damn about it. I'm like a fucking gorilla out here. I needed this money or everything in my life was going to crumble. Going to the shop early in the morning, but what I saw when I got in the parking lot scared the shit out of me. There were cars everywhere with white people jumping out and walking up to the shop. At first, it triggered me and took me back to when I was arrested. I thought about the feds coming in and snatching me out of my bed and taking me away with some shit that I did, but that I didn't understand. But I shook it off. This wasn't back then. These were not the feds, and I wasn't selling drugs anymore. Walking into the shop, music was blasting, and Dwayne was already there, talking to people like it was six at night and not six in the morning. As I set my things down in my station, I saw a text from my client saying that she wasn't coming. Great. That was the story of my life. But I put on a smile and said that today, my main goal would be trying to get my schedule full by the end of the day. What up, shorty? Dwayne screamed from the back. I guess that was my new name. Or maybe he didn't even remember my name. I guess remembering names was reserved for the bitches he was fucking. And I definitely wasn't one of them. Hey, what's up? Your key is on your station. Walking over to my station, there was a gold key laying right on top. Hey, hey, Arian, I want you to meet Lisa. He walked over with a woman by his side. She had a cancellation on her hair appointment this morning, and I told her you the baddest in the land. Here I was, not even taking off my coat, and Dwayne was already introducing me to people. Hi, nice to meet you. Girl, Dwayne showed me some of your work. You are fire for real. How much do you charge, and when can you fit me in? I felt like I was on the moon. Well, um, it depends on what you want to get done, but I did just have a cancellation, so I could take you right now. The woman's eyes got big as boulders. Oh my God, thank you. Um, let me just go home and get my hair. I'll be right back, and and I don't even care how much you charge. I'm doing it. She laughed and ran out of the shop, promising to come back. Usually women had a million questions for me, trying to figure out who I am and what they wanted and how long have I been doing hair and if I can really do what they want me to do. But this lady was ready. Let me tell you, you treat Lisa right, she'll be in your chair every week. She comes in here to buy clothes and shit for her boutique and she has more money than you can imagine. Oh my God, I felt like I was walking on air. God told me that I would be getting a blessing by working here. Mandy, I, I really appreciate it. My client didn't show up and, you know, you know how that goes. And to rule number one, in this business, when you're doing what you're doing, you need to get deposits. Make them hoes keep their appointments because every missed appointment is money you ain't making. You did? He was putting me up on game and I was taking mental notes. I nodded as he kept talking. He told me about how he got started in the business and how he was charging $5 for haircuts just to get people in the door. Now look at me. These niggas got to pay $75 just to sit in my chair. I soaked up everything he was telling me. He reminded me so much of Paul, my baby daddy, how he was when we first met. Paul gave me the game, but back then showing me that he cared meant showing me how to cut dope. (laughs) 
Back then, it wasn't braiding or cutting hair. The game was cocaine and heroin. But even though the game changed, my love for the hustle was still the same. You feel me, though? You just got to push through this shit. I felt him all right. I knew exactly what was going on. From the way he was looking at me, and every few words, he would lean over and put his hand on my shoulder. I know what you're going through, shorty. You bring in some money to this shop, and this shop will take care of you, all right? Yeah, um, I get it, D. Thank you. Like, thank you for real. Like, really, thank you. What the fuck happened between yesterday and today that made this man look so sexy to me? I couldn't tell you. But now he just looked like a snack. I just wanted to open him up and eat him. But the door opened instead. I turned my head, thinking it was Miss Lisa coming back. D quickly brushed me off, but it was too late. Really? Really? This is what you need me to come into the shop for? The bitch was damn near screaming. Hey, calm all that down, man. Like, no, who is this bitch? I felt my face get hot as the bitch walked closer. With her heels clanking on the shop floor. Her posture and the way she was talking was all wrong. I saw bitches in prison for less. First of all, I'm not a bitch. My name is Arian. I put my hand out to shake hers and let the bitch know that there was no way I was trying to push up on her man. This was all business. But she looked at my hand like I had shit on my fingers. Like I said, Dwayne, who is this bitch in my shop? I was about to say something, but Tori, one of the other stylists, grabbed me and pulled me back. Chill, girl. That's Miss Boss, bitch. That's what I call her. She was whispering as this chick got all up in Dwayne's face. She was about to be Miss Get Her Ass Whooped. Who the fuck is she to be talking to people like that? We talked low while the chick and Dwayne argued. I felt like we were on a talk show. It was way too early for this shit. And what bitch comes to a man's job and argues with him about work? It's 6 o'clock in the morning. Girl, that is Kiara Kiki Lawrence, the co-owner of this shop, Dwayne's main chick, and a big-time lawyer. Trey was giving me the lowdown on this bitch. You see, she's always popping up in here, going off on Dwayne. Sometimes he takes her in the back, fucks her real good, and she sets up. <laughs> Tori laughed, and in that second, I figured it all out. That's what was going on last night, but today it was a whole different tune. I sat back in the salon chair, peeping the whole scene, and the bitch was insecure, and it showed. I could see that from the go. She was dressed up in a nice business suit, and yesterday I remembered her having on a black skirt, but today it was slacks and a blazer to match. Her heels looked expensive, red bottoms, and some other designer bag that I had had no clue of. Her hair was laid in some kind of updo with curls and not to mention the BMW keys that were dangling from her hand. She was definitely paid and she was cute, but she was all wrong. Dwayne needed somebody strong that wouldn't be on his back every day. The only thing a hustler appreciated was money. Definitely not some nagging ass bitch on his back. You see you all in here with this bitch. You didn't even answer me about the meeting tonight. Dwayne rolled his eyes as I cracked my knuckles. Boss bitch and part owner of the line or not, I wasn't about to be too many more bitches from this stuck-up insecure hoe. I beat bitches down in prison that were ten times bigger and better than her, and here there were no guards to stop me. What did I tell you about cursing and causing a scene, man? Dwayne got in her face, finally checking the bitch like he should have when she first came through the door. I gotta go see about my kids tonight. You do remember that I do have other responsibilities besides you, Kiki? She pouted, her lip poking out like a toddler. But but you promised. It's a meeting with one of the partners. I need you there, Dwayne. But Dwayne just shook his head. Junior has a basketball game tonight. And I promised him I would be there. I'm going to take him and his sister to dinner. I can't back out. Well, fine then. See if I keep putting money into this shop and paying your bills and shit. And out the door before she could say anything else. Tori laughed as soon as the sh door closed, leaving us all alone. <laughs> Honey, that bitch is a trip.
I don't know how she stays with Dwayne's old dog ass. Woo! <laughs> Tori talked while she cleaned up her station. What you mean his dog ass? Girl, Dwayne is the biggest hoe in town. He has babies here, there, and everywhere. Kiki's stupid ass is just dumb enough to stay with him. She gives that nigga money and everything. Tori shook her head, but I was too busy watching them argue outside the window. I wished I could hear what they were saying. But I thought Dwayne got his own money. (laughs) Don't get me wrong. D is a hustler and all, but Kiki's a big time lawyer. That bitch makes well into six figures. Hmm. I nodded my head, thinking of a master plan as I watched the scene. And then, (laughs) as I watched... Kiki hauled back and slapped D hard and walked back to her car, leaving him in front of the shop holding his face. Ooh, we, I guess he didn't give in to what she wanted. Troy said just what I was thinking. But don't get all bent out of shape. She gets like that with new people she sees trying to push up on D. No hard feelings. Oh, whoa, I wasn't pushing up. Honey, please. <laughs> I saw the way he looks at you and looks at your ass. How he was all up on you the first day you interviewed to come into the shop. Old girl sees it too, and she's threatened. (laughs) I laughed a little bit as D came back in the shop with a frown deep on his face. I'm sorry y'all had to experience that. I'm going to make sure that shit like that doesn't happen anymore. And Arian, I'm sorry about all the disrespect. I'm really sorry. He came over to me shaking my hand. But that look in his eyes said more to me. Maybe Tori was right. Maybe Dwayne did have a little thing for me. No worries, D. Let's let's just get this money. I think I got some people that might be interested in your merchandise, too. His eyes lit up like a Christmas tree. Oh, word? Call them up then, shit. I'll give you a commission on everything they buy, straight up. He was excited again. This man was a certified hustler. And he needed a real bitch that was going to bring him money, make him feel powerful, and not stress him out. That's what's up. Um, I'll get, get them, like, right now. I'll call them up. We can all eat, you know? He smiled at that, and a plan jumped into my head. I knew it from that moment on that Miss Kiera had a right to feel threatened because I was about to steal her man. And most of all, there was no way... She was going to be able to stop me.